so guys i am a verified educator on an online learning platform called on academy right where i am making courses for gate examination both in hindi and english right so you can download the on academy learning app search my name over there act and follow me on that particular platform for awesome videos on the gate chemistry examination right so very good evening to you guys now since you were uh, requesting me to make videos on reagents uh, so i thought i'll make a video on the important reducing agents uh, that are important from exam point of view and these kind these reagents that i've listed down they are in fact a uh, very important reagents from synthetic point of view like if you are uh, doing practical organic chemistry these are some of the reagents that you might have to use or you might encounter on a day-to-day -day basis right uh, and this video is not going to be from a mechanistic point of view it's just going to give you general idea of the reactivity of different kinds of reducing agents and which functional groups do they act on so that will tell you about the chemoselectivity of these reagents and there are many questions that are asked from this particular topic so without wasting any more time now let's just begin right so we have lithium aluminum hydride on the top which is a very important reducing agent it's a very versatile re re reducing agent it can reduce almost all kinds of functional groups so it makes it a versatile reducing agent but again the chemoselectivity will not be obtained with lithium aluminum hydride so for example lithium aluminum hydride i'll just these are the main functional groups that i have uh, written down over here this one is imine then we have aldehyde then we have ketone uh, followed by ester amide and carboxylic acid so i'm just you can just pick which all functional groups does lithium aluminum hydride uh, reduce and then once we have discussed the reactivity then we'll move on to the substrates I'm, I'm going to take different substrates and i'm going to explain you with the help of substrates how these how the reactivity varies and what kind of product we'll get if we use uh, these particular reagents so we'll get different products on using different reagents or if we want any one specific product then how, what kind of or what is the most appropriate way or which is the most appropriate reagent that we require or we may use to get that particular product right so lithium aluminum, lithium aluminum hydride re reduces imines these are imines it reduces imines it reduces aldehyde it reduces ketone it reduces ester and it reduces amide okay so it reduces all these functional groups except carboxylic acid so lithium aluminum hydride remember does is not able to reduce carboxylic acids to alcohols it can reduce amides to amines it can reduce esters to alcohol it can reduce ketones to again secondary alcohols it can reduce aldehydes to alcohols and it can reduce amines to amine right but it cannot reduce your uh, uh, carboxylic acid right now next is sodium borohydride so there are different kinds of reagents one is sodium so, sodium borohydride and one is sodium borohydride with cerium trichloride right so it has different role with cerium trichloride right now i am just talking about pure sodium borohydride right sodium borohydride so sodium borohydride can reduce imines to amine it can reduce your aldehyde to alcohol it can reduce ketone to um, alcohol as well what it cannot do is it cannot reduce all these three substrates it can to some extent reduce the ester to alcohol but again the reactivity of sodium borohydride uh, i mean it can reduce but it will take a lot of time it will reduce it very very slowly so for all practical purposes you can say sodium borohydride does not reduce ester to alcohol it is a it will reduce it uh, if we continue the reaction for a very very long time right so in the exam generally that's why they mention which is the most appropriate reagent to be used to convert ester to alcohol and if you have lithium aluminum hydride in the option and you have sodium borohydride in the option the correct answer would be lithium aluminum hydride because both can reduce but the appropriate reagent would be lithium aluminum hydride because it can easily reduce the ester to alcohol sodium borohydride it can reduce but will reduce very very slowly so the yield of the chemical reaction also matters and the yield will not be very good and the reaction time will be very high so it won't be an appropriate reagent to reduce ester to alcohol right then coming on to sodium cyanoborohydride sodium so, uh, sodium cyanoborohydride is a very mild reducing agent okay out of all these functional groups it is only able to reduce your imines that's it 
it's only able to reduce imines it is not able to reduce all the other functional groups right so it can be a very chemoselective reagent right so if you have a particular uh, substrate which has a ketone which has a ester and which has a imine and you want that specifically imine to be reduced then you can use sodium cyanoborohydride on the other hand if you want all the three all the three functional groups to be reduced you can simply add three equivalents of or basically more equivalents of lithium aluminium hydride right okay so um, this is about sodium cyanoborohydride again so sodium cyanoborohydride being a mild reducing agent it can also reduce aldehydes to alcohols but again that reaction will be very very slow so for practical purposes you can say that sodium cyanoborohydride only is able to reduce easily your amines to amine right then talking about lithium borohydride lithium borohydride again uh, like you can see it this way lithium aluminium hydride and lithium borohydride so lithium borohydride you can think of it as a sister of lithium aluminium hydride it is a slightly milder version of lithium aluminium hydride so i told you lithium aluminium hydride can reduce all these functional groups except alcohol except carboxylic acid lithium borohydride being a little less reactive can reduce all these four functional groups okay it can reduce ester it can reduce ketones it can reduce alcohol it can reduce imines but it is not it is not able to reduce your carboxylic acids and your amides so these two reagents it is not able to reduce coming on to bh3 now bh3 is a star okay <laughs> it's a star actually because bh3 uh, now uh, bh3 can reduce your amides to amines and it can reduce carboxylic acids to alcohols none of these reagents can reduce your carboxylic acid directly to alcohol it is only possible with the help of bh3 but the catch is that bh3 cannot reduce aldehyde to alcohol it cannot reduce ketone to alcohol it cannot re reduce ester to alcohol okay and why is that One, once we talk about the mechanistic point of view of these reducing agents you'll understand why bh3 uh, is able to reduce amides and uh, carboxylic acids but unable to reduce your ketones and esters and aldehydes right aldehydes again it might be able to reduce but very very slowly but it, it cannot reduce ketones and esters and uh, the reason is uh, because it follows a different mechanism as compared to this hydride donors so hydride donors follow a different mechanism and bh3 follows a different mechanism right uh, coming on to these uh, hydrogenate hydrogenating reagents these hydrogenating reagents basically can reduce double bonds very easily but they are unable to reduce your carbonyl groups right they cannot reduce the co bond very easily again if we let the reaction continue for a very long time and, and a very long time and apply a lot of pressure it can reduce your co bond as well but in general it does not reduce your co bond right or right? it, it generally re reduces your triple bond or a double bond basically alkynes and alkenes and it can also reduce uh, basically your uh, ring system the aromatic ring system of uh, phenyl or benzene it can reduce it under some conditions so this is the role of hydrogenating reagents right now what i'm going to do is so i hope you got a brief idea of the reactivity okay and i forgot about dibel h so dibel h is also a very very important reagent and let's say you want to convert your ester to alcohol okay so let's say you are going to convert your ester to alcohol so whenever you're converting ester to alcohol in inter the intermediate form is aldehyde right but now let's just focus on the logic okay let's just focus on the logic if we have a reducing agent which is so strong which can reduce this ester to alcohol then if the intermediate that is formed is aldehyde obviously it will going to it is going to reduce the aldehyde to alcohol so it's not going to stop at the formation of aldehyde because if there is a reducing agent which is so strong which can reduce the ester and once the ester gets reduced first it forms aldehyde like i told you the intermediate and now it's because reducing agent is so strong it will reduce the aldehyde as well because aldehydes are much more reactive as compared to esters so it will reduce this aldehyde to alcohol but let's say for a particular reaction we want the formation of aldehyde from ester generally what was done was first the ester was reduced to alcohol then it was oxidized again to form aldehyde so this required two steps but let's say we want to do it in one step we directly want from ester to aldehyde that can be done by dibel h dibel h stands for diisobutyl aluminium hydride all right so it contains a aluminium hydrogen bond 
and this and under very very uh, low temperatures uh, some most of the double h reactions are put uh, under an instrument called julabo at minus 78 degrees celsius most of the most of the reactions so over there it is able to convert your ester to alcohol in some cases uh, sorry ester to aldehyde okay in some cases lithium aluminum hydride is also able to do this but at very low temperatures but again the most appropriate reagent to convert your ester to alcohol uh, to aldehyde would be double H right now what we are going to do is in the next video we are going to take su su certain substrates which are written down over here and then there are certain more substrates which I'll add and I'll tell you how if you want to obtain a particular product uh, which kind of reagents would be the most appropriate for changing that particular uh, for for, get, for obtaining that particular product from from a particular set of reactants right so anyway I hope you found this video useful uh, if you did Please like this video and also do not forget to share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to this, subscribe sorry and do not forget to subscribe to this channel thank you